Now, the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. What might be right for you may not be right for some. It takes different strokes to move the world. Yes, it does. It takes different strokes to move the world. Mm. I was reminded of that ancient parable while watching Jerry Nadler, the highly attractive congressman, unleash this knowledge about Antifa in Portland. It is true. There's violence across the whole country. Do you disavow the violence from Antifa? That's happening in Portland right now? There's that, that's, that, that's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. It Sir, there's, there's videos everywhere violence. online. There's fires and riots. There's th they're throwing fireworks at uh, federal officers. DHS is there. Look online. It gets crazy, Mr. Nadler. What's he doing? Just pulled over to the side of the road there. <laughs> You'd understand it. Now, to you and I, this might seem like the most insane thing you've ever heard. After all, there is an incredible amount of video evidence that does show Antifa very much is a real thing in Portland and has been terrifying the city and its residents for years. But do we understand the perspective of Jerry Nadler? How can we use this moment to internalize his worldview? To understand that, we will have to understand who Jerry Nadler is. You might remember Jerry Nadler as one of the managers named uh, by Nancy Pelosi to get on camera and act like he cared about the Constitution during the impeachment. And on the surface, he has all the qualifications for that job. He's a long-serving congressman from New York. He's the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. He's a leading Democrat in Congress and has spent decades preparing to investigate corruption and dishonesty, mainly by constantly participating in it. But what kind of event could have altered Jerry's view of reality so much that he is in complete denial over the destruction of a major U.S. city. It would have to be something so incredibly humiliating that it shook his foundation to the core. I think we have found what it is. You would think searching the internet for a congressman would result in a list of accomplishments or important legislation he has been a part of, but no. This is entirely real, and I beg of you to replicate it yourself at home. When you do a Google search for Jerry Nadler, the very first result is, I kid you not, Jerry Nadler's pants. Jerry Nadler pants. The internet is a place where you can easily see pictures of every natural and scientific wonder of the world. Why would so many people across the country search for the pants of Jerry Nadler? Because he wears them like this. Oh, it's beautiful. They're literally six centimeters below his nipples. Look, Jerry, I, I mean, if you want to buy a onesie, buy a onesie. Uh, there's no need to retroactively convert your slacks. His pants look like they're a massive Burmese python so slowly swallowing him feet first. <laughs> look at this poor guy. Look out, Jerry, he's already up to your chest. Quick, move. Now, you might not be able to recognize it yet. But there is a point to all of this. You see, whether you're talking about fat Jerry or slightly less fat, but probably smelly Jerry, all Jerry's are Jerry's that are in denial. That's why we've created the Jerry Nadler scale of denial. Mm. The higher the pants, the higher the level of denial. And don't worry, it's just like every time he's ever appeared in the dream of a female, he's always wearing pants. To test our billion-dollar Nadler denial system, let's watch some of the handiwork of the group he says is a myth, Antifa. Now, I would warn you uh, that some of this footage is really disturbing and you should not let your kids watch this. But I already told you that you'd be looking at Jerry Nadler, so any decent parent has already told their kids to avoid the screen at all costs. Let's start with this elderly gentleman uh, who's having a disagreement with our myth mythical group, Antifa, they first steal his bike, and then as he goes to get it back, keep an eye out for the lovely ponytailed lady that pops into the shot. You're gonna rip me off. No. Oh, he's drinking. Oh, he's drinking. What are you so saying, what? bro? Oh, you want to get drinking. What's up, bro? That's 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 All right. a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. Ah, it's a myth. Now look. I mean, sure, it's an elderly guy getting punched in the face, but I think he was hit by a girl. Now, I don't know how that person identifies, but I can at least say this for certain. She punches like a girl. Nadler denial level? Pants uh, around the low waist area. He never wears them like this. How about this flag-waving American? 
You can almost hear Lee Greenwood singing God Bless the USA until this turns a bit ugly. You have all these people protesting just like him. Because we're done with people like you. Because I have an opinion. That's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. Mm, it's pretty mythical. This is a standard operating procedure of the mythical group Antifa, who heavily feature the sucker punch as a tactic. However, he's wearing some decently padded gloves, which takes some of the impact away. And sure, this ends with him you know, being kicked on the ground by an angry mob, but you can't really see the details, making it easy for Jerry Nadler to deny. Nadler denial level? Right around his meaty, me, me, his meaty midsection. That is adorable. Now, every July 5th, you can read your local news site to see stories about how people blew their hands off with fireworks, usually handled while very drunk. Everyone knows to handle fireworks with caution. It's just that this mythical group of Antifa thinks that just means aiming them carefully at police. That, that's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. Mm, mythical fireworks. Ooh. Look, firing explosives at the feds usually means bad things, but who can resist those beautiful colors? Nadler denial level. Pants up to the permanent crease created in between the stomach and the chest formed when Nadler sits down. One thing is for sure, while Antifa doesn't seem to be a myth, they can't be awful enough to attack a man in a wheelchair, right? That's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. Huh. There's always somebody nearby. You ever notice this? Just saying, hey, stop that. But there's never anyone around to actually stop it. Maybe that's because Antifa is just a myth. Right, Jerry? Nadler denial level, pants up to the nipples. Jerry Nadler's nipples. You just thought about Jerry Nadler's nipples. You're welcome, America. And finally, I remind you again to keep the kitties away because this one is legitimately difficult to watch as if the others weren't. One of the narratives we hear from time to time is that people attacked by this mythical group, Antifa, are just as antagonizing. Both sides are yelling at each other. It's a back and forth. And eventually Antifa starts attacking. And that is true. Sometimes. It's also very much illegal. But yes, sometimes the words are flying both ways before these incidents. And sometimes people just want to start a fight. The Antifa apologist will tell you that you should just de-escalate the situation. Remove yourself. Run away and nothing will happen to you. Well, this guy tried just that. Once again, viewer discretion is advised. That, that's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. Is it a myth, Jerry? For a mythical foot, that sure did cause a lot of damage. I'll save you the gruesome and bloody pictures of the aftermath, but this sort of thing is a constant presence in Portland right now. The Portland trailblazers are thinking, thank God we can get out of Portland to the comparably safe confines of mid-pandemic central Florida. By the way, Nadler, denial level, uh, it's at his highest point on that one. I mean, it's right up to his stupid neck, which is where he actually wears his pants. Antifa is not a myth. It's not some creation of scaredy cat conservatives in their cul-de-sacs. It's a group that is taking advantage of the social unrest due to the economy, the pandemic, and George Floyd, all the aftermath, and trying to further their goals of chaos and destruction. Honestly, Portland and Seattle seem to me to be far away from, sitting, from where I'm sitting in Texas. I mean, that's, it, it feels sort of distant. 
And a lot of people will look at these cities as examples of progressive craziness and say, you know what, let it burn. Let them left reap what they sow. But there are tens of thousands of people in Portland who didn't vote for this craziness, and yet they're being ruled by it. And if you start turning over these communities to the mythical Antifas of the world, they will happily accept it. And they will plant little baby chazzes and chops all over the country until one day your windows are the ones getting smashed in. The left is taking an important stand. And I don't mean Antifa. I mean the stodgy old run-of-the-mill Democrats like Jerry Nadler. They are standing with the people shooting fireworks at federal officers. They are standing with the terrorists beating up random people in wheelchairs. They are standing with the criminals kicking the heads of lifeless bodies lying in the streets and then laughing about it on camera. If that's the world you want, then Portland and Seattle have helpfully illuminated the path to get there. But if you want something other than an apocalyptic hellscape, now is the time to speak up. Because there is a myth about Antifa. The myth is that they're any different from the modern Democratic Party. Hi, Stu Bergier of Stu Does America here. Thanks so much for watching our video. Did you know you could watch our entire catalog for free right here on our channel? Subscribe now and be sure to hit the thumbs up button on all the episodes you watch because that's how they know you like this stupid show. And that little bell in the corner as well. Make sure you click that. You'll get notifications every time we post new content. Stu Does America every weekday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here.